I'm going to focus on nine butterflies that I see most often in my backyard. They are cloudless sulfur, gulf fritillary, giant swallowtail, morning cloak. Those are the first four which I see either daily or many times a week. The next five I see less frequently and those are monarchs, painted lady, gray hair streak, mournful dusky wing, and skippers, the smallest of all. One thing you might see is a butterfly migration. This is what I saw last spring as butterflies from Mexico migrated through Southern California going north. And for several days they passed through my backyard. These are painted ladies and they migrate annually, both spring and fall. Another activity we'll see is nectaring. Painted lady, Mournful dusky wing. Fritillaries. And sulfurs. And then on a chilly morning, we may see a butterfly basking in the sun. They're cold blooded, so they have to get their body temperatures to a certain level before they can fly. Another common activity is sheltering in bushes or trees. But what happened here was unusual because this giant swallowtail got caught out trying to hide in place, I assume, but not completely protected from these Santa Ana winds, these occasional but forceful winds we get here in Southern California. Another tactic is hiding in plain sight. I'm the one that shot the video and I know there's a small skipper in the very center of the frame, but even I sometimes lose it because it's so well camouflaged in the leaf litter. This giant swallowtail is puddling. It is taking up minerals and other nutrients from the wet decomposed granite. This same giant swallowtail is now puddling on concrete which gets its mineral nutrients from being downslope from the decomposed granite. Another activity is perching, especially by males overlooking a favorite place or a territory or a display area. Another very common activity, especially among male butterflies, is patrolling. So here's this swallowtail that goes along the edge of this thicket of trees, turns right, circles back up the other side, comes back over the top, back to in front of me, and then it does it all over again. A related behavior, again also among males, is driving off competitors. Here we see a swallowtail and hot on its heels is a smaller butterfly, which is the morning cloak. And the morning cloak, who thinks that's its exclusive territory, tries to drive off the swallowtail. These sulfur butterflies here that are circling one another and when they do that and then they go up into an upward spiral. I used to think that was a mating activity, but I think it's more likely one male driving off another. Then of course there's looking for mates. So here's a smaller swallowtail on the right. Because it's smaller, it's presumably the male. And it's trying to get the attention of this larger swallowtail on the left, presumably a female. And it's not working out too well for him. But when it is successful, mating occurs. After mating, the female butterfly lays its eggs, which is always on the host plant. So here's a gulf fertilary laying eggs on its host plant to the passion vine. Here she's placing an egg on the tip of that tendril. The host plant is simply the plant that its caterpillars will eat after they hatch. Here is a female cloudless sulfur laying eggs on the blossom of acacia or senna, its host plant. And here are several different cloudless sulfur caterpillars at various stages of development. 
As it grows larger, bands appear along its side. The sulfur caterpillar is now fully grown. This is the caterpillar of the Gulf Fritillary on Passion Vine, its host plant. If you want caterpillars to grow and become butterflies in your backyard, you will have to tolerate some leaf damage. This one is crawling away to form a chrysalis. This one is a small monarch caterpillar, while the one at bottom is fully grown. It will crawl off to form a chrysalis. At left is a monarch chrysalis, while at right is a monarch caterpillar about to form another one. After a time, the chrysalis becomes translucent, and you can actually see the orange and black butterfly that will soon emerge. When it first emerges, it looks like it's been damaged, but it quickly pumps fluid from its large abdomen into its wings. And after an hour or so, it begins to look like an adult butterfly. It begins the adult portion of its life cycle. They feed on many types of flowers. Here is a very small sampling beginning with a skipper on Cleveland Sage and a painted lady on Cleveland Sage. A skipper on California Coast Sunflower. A painted lady on a wildflower. A Gulf Fritillary on Lantana. A gray hair streak on Milkweed a gray hair streak on a different variety of milkweed, and a morning cloak on Pride of Madeira. Do you notice that they seem to enjoy flowers that have many florets? They can walk across a carpet of florets from one to the next, and it's a very efficient form of feeding. Following are a few noteworthy examples of native and non-native flowers for your garden, beginning with yarrow, lantana, California buckwheat, and verbena. These first four have the advantage of having a long bloom season. Also, wildflowers, pride of Madeira, milkweed, and any other flower that produces multiple florets. Plant passion vine for gulf fritillaries, cassia for cloudless sulfurs, and milkweed for monarchs.